very few know him as David MacArthur. Six years old, he was about three and a half foot tall and two foot wide. Started to play youth football, and that's when David went to Moose. School teachers would call home and say, okay, everybody in the class calls him Moose. His name's David on paper. What should I call him? It's Moose. And he was a caring kid. His world was always taking care of others. He loved Army. Him and my nephew would play Army. I remember one time they both dressed up, camouflage everything, and they were walking the neighborhood. I'm like, you guys, somebody is going to call the police on you guys. You can't walk around dressed like that. Ever since I was a little kid, I would tell my mom either I'm, I'm going to the NFL or, or I'm going in the Marine Corps. I enlisted in the Marine Corps, graduated, I guess it was the day before Thanksgiving. Lindsay, who actually became my wife, we got married December 26 of 09 and found out we were deploying in March and then also found that, that we were gonna have a baby. It was a emotional time. We were the first unit that was really like pushing down towards this place called Sangin. We had like troops in contact from day one. We did a lot of, a lot of patrols, a lot of raids. We'd work on foreign relations. There was a, a reserve unit that was pinned down in Marja, so we had to go down there and rescue them. We secured Del Round 2 and then just pushed down into Sangin. I was injured right outside of Sangin, but Sangin's also where 3-5, uh, our, our sister unit, came in and they got beat up pretty bad. I was in five IED explosions. I was having bad headaches and wasn't really myself and I didn't want to leave. They said, why don't you why don't you just be a driver? Just, it's a nice, easy job. Just drive for a while until you, you know, you heal up. There was a remote detonated IED that blew up. The next thing I remember, like I'm in the back of a vehicle with the head corpsman getting checked out. So then that night I tried to sleep. I was getting sick and, you know, not, not real well. And then the next morning they medevac the, the three of us out. Brain injuries and the effects of IEDs weren't really known at that time. They sent me to Germany for a, a brain scan, a CT scan, and then that's when they saw all the damage to my brain. And it made sense to them because I was having, a, having trouble standing, having trouble walking, talking. All my results showed that, that I couldn't be a Marine anymore. He was very easy to anger. I could touch him, but he had to know that I was gonna, gonna touch him. He would call me because he couldn't remember how to write a check. He'd be cooking, Mom, I forgot, how am I supposed to do this? So after Germany, I was at Walter Reed for a little while. Then they sent me to San Diego. And then because it was so unknown, they actually sent me back to my unit. They had me doing like simple tasks and I was messing up on simple tasks. And it was frustrating because I was trying, you know, like I was trying. All the brothers that I fought so hard to, to stay there with and protect were, were bashing on me and, you know, faking being hurt. He, he wanted one thing, he wanted to go back. Dad, I want to go back to my guys. I feel like I'm living in someone else's body. I'll say things without processing it, and it's, it's embarrassing. The hardest part is like finding happiness. It's an invisible injury. I haven't gone a day without a headache since 2010, when I got hurt. His brain's torn in three places, and it destroyed the lower lobe of his brain where the spinal cord nerves come into the brain. It bled, surrounded those nerve endings, and that's why he has a headache with every breath he takes. Moose could look you in the face and say, there is only one way in my life can my head stop hurting, and that is to die. Battled suicide, I've battled I've lost a marriage to deal with anger, deal with pain, deal with sadness, deal with all this stuff. I've made a lot of progress now. The, the Joshua Chamberlain Society is coming into my life. You have no idea how much it means to me and how much I'm looking forward to the brotherhood and, and all this stuff that I've been chasing for so long. Healing for me and, and comfort has been helping others. He is just so excited and so overwhelmed to be able to become a member of, of this organization. 
being involved with JCS, hopefully it can help with the system that's in place and the system to come so that the future wounded warriors, it doesn't take them so long to get the care that they truly need. I'm very thankful for JCS. It's been so long since uh, like I've felt accepted or not crazy. So it's, it's nice. I look forward to being in this family because um, that's what it is. Just don't, don't give up.